from my mouth. 
Welcome to St. Mark's, and um, welcome to those that are here in the building, and obviously for those joining us um, online, you are all very welcome. Um, so a couple of things just to quickly say. So my name is Luke Prankard. Um, normally, I'm stuck behind the computer at the back of the church um, broadcasting things, and have done pretty much with a few other people for the last 18 months or so, so they've decided to finally let me out uh, this side of the camera. Um, and one of the first things I realized uh, as I've stood up here and looking on the screen is that I forgot to iron my polo shirt this morning. So uh, normally when you're behind the camera, it doesn't really matter. So um, uh, anyway, everybody is very welcome. Um, and uh, thank you for, for joining us and being here this morning. So we will spend some time together in worship um, and we'll be led by Helen um, and the team. And we will also have Elizabeth um, preaching and leading us um, in uh, sharing some of the words uh, with us this morning as well. So uh, before we begin, let us just quickly pray and then we'll begin with a time of worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this morning. We thank you for the ability to be here in church, in the building together, and, uh, and also to be able to share uh, our service with those online as well who are unable to, or unable to get here to the building. Lord, we, th we thank you for this morning, and we ask that uh, whatever it is that you want to say to us this morning, whether it's uh, individually to us, through whatever Elizabeth shares, or through the worship, Lord, that we are open to having our ears open to you and our hearts open to you this morning. So I pray, Lord, that we come in that way to you, to spend time with you. Amen. If you'd like to stand for our first song.
take a moment to um, share in the confession together, um, and I've used this confession before, um, which is a slightly breathing meditative uh, type of confession. So the words will come from the screen, um, and I will share some words for us to then breathe in, and then to hold our breath and pause our breath, and then to breathe out, uh, as I say, the breathing out phrase. So please join with me uh, here in the building and online. So breathe in love. and breathe out hate. Breathe in acceptance and breathe out separation. Breathe in forgiveness and breathe out blame. Breathe in peace and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in life and breathe out death. Breathe in gentleness. and breathe out tension. Breathe in God's presence and breathe out. And finally, breathe in God's acceptance and forgiveness. Amen. Grace, 
going to do a new song now so I'm going to play the we're going to sing through the first verse and the chorus and then we'll go back to the beginning again um, it is actually a beautiful song and since I heard it I just can't stop singing it it's just the words are really amazing
Jesus, thank you that you are that other in the fire, that we are never alone, that you are always with us, you stand beside us, you stand behind us, you stand in front of us. Thank you for that. Amen. Please be seated. Um, thank you, Helen and Ellie. Um, really love that song. Really enjoyed that chorus. Thank you. Um, I'm going to invite... Joel up, and we're going to do a park bench, um, socially distanced, obviously. Um, and so, yeah, it'd be nice. That we thought we'd bring back a bit of the series again as part of our kind of service and, and getting to know other people in our congregation, in our family, what they do day to day, and kind of what kind of makes them tick in some respects. So, uh, no pressure, Joel. None felt. <laughs> um, so, normally we'd kind of begin by asking what we'd be doing this time tomorrow, but bear in mind it's Bank Holiday Monday. Hopefully not work-related. Not a lot to So I'll therefore change the question to what do you typically do on a Monday to Friday? Typically, Monday to Friday, I work um, from home, which is fantastic at the moment. Uh, so for the last 32 years, I've worked for the Foreign Office. 
Um, of the last 32 years, 21 have been spent overseas. Um, so we spend the majority of our time in embassies or high commissions around the world. Um, but we're now back in Gillingham. I, and I, I hear you say royal we there. Royal we, yes, yes. <laughs> he, the better part of me is, is Vicky, who uh, most of you know. And uh, um, I'm afraid I've taken us to some really, really dodgy places in the world. I can imagine it's uh, <laughs> an interesting job, but obviously one that's not just you and obviously uh, the family Absol do things as well. Absolutely. So, um, so a couple of questions, and so, so why do you do your job, and uh, you know, did you feel called to do the job or role that you do? Second question is easier than the first one. So uh, no, I wasn't called to do the job. Um, I was joining the police force, decided I wasn't doing that. Um, irritated my mum somewhat. Uh, she was working in the civil service, so she came home, gave me the civil service application form, said fill that in, you're joining the civil service. And that's what happened. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I thoroughly enjoy my job. I love it. Yeah, just the different aspects of um, living and working overseas, seeing and working with different people. Um, it's just phenomenal. Plus the, the sense of service you get when you do, um, particularly in, in things like consular work, where you've actually helped people. Um, it's a huge sense of satisfaction. Um, I obviously, being a civil servant, don't do it for the money or the short hours. <laughs> Um, I don't think many people do their jobs yeah. for the short hours or for the money. Um, look, thank you for sharing that. Um, so, uh, obviously, being overseas for a number of years uh, as part of your role and, um, uh, and now back in Gillingham, um, well, I assume back in Gillingham from, from previous roles. Um, so, why did you come to St Mark's and, um, you know, from being stationed overseas, I suppose? So, we had five really full-on years in New Zealand um, and we came back and... Uh, we had been heavily involved in church in New Zealand and God said it's time to have a rest so we had a rest and then uh, we came to find a church and we came to St Mark's and you know, were made to feel really, really welcome and, and that welcome was, was the key. Had that not happened on that first Sunday we would have tried somewhere else um, and yeah, so we, we're here and we're happy here. Amazing. Yeah. And I'm glad that you had a warm welcome on that first Sunday. Me too. And uh, I'm sure we all, as a as church family, strive to be welcoming. It's quite difficult in the current climate um, with masks and various other things. So um, I'm pleased that you had that uh, welcome, and, and I hope others do as well, as you have come to St. Mark's if you are new. Um, so where do you feel God calling you, as in either you personally or you together as a couple, kind of now, next, or something for the future? We've often found that, you know, it's only in hindsight that you look back and go, oh, that's what God wanted us to do. That's why God had us here. You know, we're not meant to be in the UK at the moment. We're meant to be overseas on a, on a posting, but that wasn't God's plan. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it, we wait and see. We see what it is that he wants to do. I Personally, I don't always feel that, you know, there's a, a, a bigger purpose than actually living a good, good life, being a good person, being a good father, being a good parent, uh, being a good partner, just living a good honest life. I think that's a, a big enough calling and a big enough challenge for most of us. I, I would say I think most of us who are fathers and husbands or partners and parents and other kind of roles uh, we realise that those are pretty full on and demanding pretty, so, um, yeah. uh, and very fulfilling as well or can be fulfilling and frustrating. <laughs> um, so look, thank you Joel for sharing that and for getting us, allowing us to know a little bit more about you. I'm sure those that are here in the building um, I'm sure Joe will, will not disappear immediately after service and so as we congregate outside to have a bit of fellowship and chatting, I'm sure Joe will be happy to, to chat with you. So thank you, Joe. I'm just going to very quickly pray for you um, and then we will then go into our Bible reading. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Joel and for Vicky um, and thank you, Joel, for coming up this morning to share a bit about his um, work and his life and, and what he does and knowing and realising that Sometimes God's, your call uh, is something that we see after the event and not necessarily through it and before it. And we thank you, Lord, for, for Joel and what he does and uh, for being a witness in, in everything and all his life as he shared with us this morning. So, Lord, we thank you for Joel. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we will have our Bible reading that was perfectly timed uh, as we come up now.
David escaped from the prophet's village. Then he ran to see Jonathan and asked, Why does your father so want to kill me? What have I done wrong? My father can't be trying to kill you. He never does anything without telling me about it. Why would he hide this from me? It can't be true. Jonathan, I swear it's true, but your father knows how much you liked me and he didn't want to break your heart. That's why he didn't tell you. I swear by the living Lord and by your own life that I'm only one step ahead of death. Then Jonathan said, tell me what to do and I'll do it. David answered, tomorrow is the new moon festival and I'm supposed to do to eat dinner with your father, but instead I'll hide in a field until the evening of the next day. If Saul wonders where I am, tell him. David asked me to let him go to his hometown of Bethlehem so he could take part in a sacrifice his family makes there every year. If your father says it's all right, then I'm safe. But if he gets angry, you'll know he wants to harm me. Be kind to me. After all, it was your idea to promise the Lord that we would do that we would always be loyal friends. I've done any if I've done anything wrong, kill me yourself, but don't hand me over to your father. Don't worry, Jonathan. I find out that my father wants to kill you, certainly let you know. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that reading with us. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce Elizabeth to us. She's got two iPads um, <laughs> for this morning's uh, uh, sharing of the words. Um, so I'm going to quickly pray for you, and then I'll hand over the lectern to you, and you can carry on. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for, um, for Elizabeth um, and for um, coming this morning to share the word with us um, that you have put on her heart. Um, and these are your words, uh, and not Elizabeth's. And I just thank you, Lord, for... Uh, her being uh, that vessel this morning to share with us. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's. So uh, this makes a change. I normally hide behind the lovely flower arrangement, and uh, today I don't have that ability. Um, my name is Elizabeth Cooperis. My family and I attend St. Mark's. We've been here for almost three years. Um, this is my second time around attending St. Mark's. My husband and I were here in 2009, 2010, but apparently we were so quiet nobody knew us. So yay, mission accomplished. This time around I wasn't as successful, I got noticed. And then I started singing in the worship team. Um, and now somehow I'm here. Okay, <laughs> so let's, please pray for me. Um, okay, the reading that Isabella so lovely did for us today was out of 1 Samuel 20, verse 9, 1 to 9, which she read the CEV version. I'm going to read that again. You did lovely, sweetie pie. Just maybe a dance, make it quick. So, David, David escaped from Prophet's village. Then he ran to see Jonathan and asked, why does your father Saul want to kill me? What have I done wrong? My father can't be trying to kill you. He never does anything without telling me about it. Why would he hide this from me? It can't be true. Jonathan, I swear it's true, but your father knows how much you like me and he didn't want to break your heart. That's why he didn't tell you. I swear by the living Lord and by your own life that I'm only one step ahead of death. Then Jonathan said, tell me what to do and I'll do it. David answered, Tomorrow is the new moon festival, and I'm supposed to eat dinner with your father. But instead, I'll hide in the field until the evening of the next day. If Saul wonders where I am, tell him. David asked me to let him go to his hometown of Bethlehem so he could take part in a sacrificial a sacrifice his family makes there every year. If your father says it's all right, then I'm safe. But if he gets angry... You'll know he wants to harm me. Be kind to me. After all, it was your idea to promise the Lord that we would always be loyal friends. If I've done anything wrong, kill me yourself. 
but don't hand me over to your father. Don't worry, Jonathan said. If I found out that my father wants to kill you, I'll certainly let you know. So it's worth reading the whole chapter. It does explain a lot about David. Well, not just that chapter, a couple of chapters before and after. It does explain a lot about David and Jonathan. But we're focusing on that bit today. When you hear the word sacrificial love, do you, like myself, automatically think of someone dying to save someone else? The grand gesture, like in the movies, you know, that slow motion, jump in front of a bullet to save the other person, that no, move. This is not what I mean with the sacrificial love in this instance. No. Look at Jonathan. He gave up everything, everything, to protect David. You might not think that he gave up much, but you would be mistaken. Jonathan would have been king. He was crown prince. And he would have been king of not just any nation, but Israel, God's chosen people. Not only was he the crown prince, but he was also a military leader for King Saul's armies. He would have had the world at his feet, yet he chose to save his friend. A friend that was like a brother to him, but a friend nonetheless. Jonathan went against his father's wishes and did what he knew what was the right thing to do. Even if it meant he would not have the life that he was destined to have, or worse, he put his own life and that of his family in danger with his actions. Jonathan had realized by then that David was going to be king and not him. And as was the custom in those days, the new king had full right to dispose of the old royal family as to leave no claims on the throne. So this means that when David took the throne of king, he had right to kill Jonathan and all of Jonathan's family. He had literally put his own life and that of his family in danger by doing this. But he trusted that his friendship with David meant more and that David will honor their vow and spare him. By the way, David did. He did honor his vow and he did spare him. And he actually raised Jonathan's son. For those of you that don't know the story. Jonathan didn't help David for a reward. He knew there wasn't a reward. He didn't do it, he did it to protect David, his friend. Jonathan didn't knew, know that he, by protecting David, he was helping David accomplish his goals that God had put before him. Jonathan helped David without realizing he was aiding in God's larger plan for David to one day become the great king and leader of Israel. He didn't need a minute. He didn't go, ooh, that price is too steep to pay. No, he just knew he needed to save his friend at all costs. And that's what he did. He blindly trusted and took a leap of faith that things will work out right, even if it was to the detriment of himself. He wasn't motivated by guilt or fear. No, he was motivated by the right thing. And during all this, Jonathan still had hope for his father as well. During all of this, he still believed that Saul would not go against his word and vow that Saul made to Jonathan. Even with Saul, later on in the chapter, cursing Jonathan and saying, you are no son of mine, in verse 30. And Saul even throwing a spear at Jonathan, his own son, trying to kill him, in verse 33. All this because Jonathan was a loyal friend that was willing to lay down his own life for what he knew was the right thing. 
How many times have we done something in order to get something in return? The reward system. That's not sacrificial love. Sacrificial love comes with no strings attached and no words like, you owe me. Sometimes we do things without realizing that it is sacrificial life be it that your family is currently not living in the same house, town, or county, because it's more beneficial for the family to be separated at the moment. Maybe you have packed up your whole life and moved to a different country, not knowing anyone or anything there, but you didn't do it because you were thinking of yourself. Nope, you did it to support the person you love, and they are there and happy. Or you decide not to have a romantic relationship because your children come first, and they will not understand the new person in your life? Or could it be that you are willing to fight for your country, even if that means giving up your life? If it means that your family and the citizens, thousands of people that you do not know, are safe when it is needed? This, this is called sacrificial love. The willingness to save, help, Protect others when it, when it, it's, because it's the right thing to do without thinking of what the rewards are or the consequences can or will be for yourself. Sacrificial love is giving without gaining something. You do not expect something back. You do not want something back. You are not driven by reward or fear, but, but, why, but, but by what is right. The biggest and best example of this is Jesus. Jesus willingly died on the cross for us. Yes, he prayed that evening before that the cup may pass him, but he also said, not my will, but yours. He willingly gave up his life on the cross that day. He gave nothing, he gained nothing, but we did. We gained eternal life. Jesus didn't do it because he was forced to, or we were scared, or we was expecting something in return. He did it because he knew it was the right thing to do to help God's people. My challenge to you all is stop thinking of what I can gain from helping someone. But be like Jonathan, where he says in verse 4, Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it for you. Thank you. Finally. Please stand, um, and we'll just um, sing this song. And as you're singing, just think about the words that Elizabeth was saying, how God wants you to be using those words in your life, how he wants you to draw closer to him through that.
peace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never Please be seated. So we're going to come to a time of um, a prayer together um, as we uh, think about a few things um, and pray for a few things that are uh, happening in our world um, and in our communities um, around us as well. Um, and there will be a time as well to pause and reflect on those that uh, you have on your hearts and wish to lift up as well. So let's pray together. Lord, we, we thank you for um, the words shared this morning and sac what sacrificial love means, both in terms of what Jesus did for us, each individually, but also what that therefore means for us and how we can, be, how we can show sacrificial love to those around us, to our family members, to our friends, to our neighbors, and to those in our community. And Lord, I pray as we go into this week that 
we can consider how we can put that into action, how we can give sacrificially in love. And Lord, as we think around what's going on around the world, from those fleeing persecution to just the sheer weight of people feeling the need to have to leave their country or their homes where they feel that they should feel safe but feel that they have to leave. Our screens are filled with images from Afghanistan and Kabul in particular. And Lord, we can see that there's a time of, uh, of great unknowing and nervousness, both for those there and for those that have been helping and for those that are seeing it from afar. And sometimes we feel helpless, Lord. And all we can do, and sometimes the best thing we can do, is lift this to you. And so, Lord, we pray that whatever happens over the coming hours, weeks, months, and probably years, that you will be able to have a hand in what happens and that you will be able to share a sense of peace and love for everyone in that place. And we thank you, Lord, for those um, people who have been helping um, to arrange safe passage for those in need, um, and particularly for Joel's colleagues who've been involved in that situation and our armies and other nations around the world in helping. And Lord, we lift all those people to you and we thank you for their bravery and for their commitment to that. And Lord, we are aware that obviously a lot of people are suffering and dealing with bereavement, both here in our family at St. Mark's and around the world and in our communities and everywhere. And Lord, there's no, it's never easy to deal with. And we have some sense of security in where people belong in your family as a result of bereavement. But it still doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. So Lord, we want to lift up those people who are feeling that loss at this time. And Lord, may you comfort them, may you reassure them, and may we as individuals be aware and be present for those people as well, Lord. Again, we may not know the right thing to say, but I just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be mindful and aware of those that are suffering loss and to show that we are there to be able to support and help in any way we can. And Lord, so we take a few moments just to think of those around us who we know are suffering or in need of your prayer, in need of your help. And Lord, we should take a moment just to, to lift those names up to you now. Lord, you know what is on our hearts and you know the people on our hearts and we lift those to you and we know that you hear us. So Lord, we thank you that you are a God that we can communicate with and that we can listen to and share our, our pains, our thoughts and our worries. And Lord, we know that you are there listening and are able to take action. Lord, let us know how we can respond to that as well. Amen. So, time for some uh, family news or notices, as the good old Church of England thing we like to do. Um, so, there's a few things to share with you. Um, so, uh, I will start with what's happening this evening. So, I think there may be a video to play. So, we'll play that now if that's okay. St. Mark's Gospel Nights presents a night of praise and worship led by a gospel band themed Like David Dance. This will take place on Sunday the 29th of August from 6.30pm. 
at St. Mark's Church, 1 Canterbury Street, Gillingham, Kent, ME7 5TP. Ministering in songs, Minister Shegun prays. Why don't you come with your heart of worship, your dancing shoes, and a grateful heart, and let's give praise to God. Is that the end of the video? Cool. Uh, sorry. I should watch these things before I uh, introduce them so I know when they finish. Um, Mayo will be leading us tonight in our, our gospel evening, um, so uh, please feel free to come along this evening. Um, probably the one time of the month where our sound system in this building really gets pushed uh, to what it can actually do rather than uh, to the level that we have this morning. So um, please feel free to come to that tonight, 6.30 here this evening. Um, a few things, obviously, to St. Mark's um, newsletter. So um, for those of you that um, don't get it, um, there's a lovely weekly email that comes out on a Thursday from the team um, that shares all the news of what's happening around our, our church family. Um, if you don't get it, um, either go onto the website and you can see it there. So there's kind of a link to it. Um, equally, um, you could just message the office and they'll add you to the distribution list so it pops into your, your inbox on a Thursday. And it's a fairly quick reads just to catch up on what's going on. Um, so things like um, information on Little Eden Project, Oven Church and Craft Club and a few other things that happen kind of during the week so that you're informed. Um, but obviously just one a couple of other notices. So um, uh, Ladies Group starts again on the 15th of September, so it's a couple of Wednesdays away um, in the morning, 10 till 12, and it'll be at the Old Vicarage. Uh, and I've been informed that croissants will be provided with tea or coffee. Um, so... Uh, if you're a lady and would like tea or coffee and a croissant on a, on a Wednesday morning, so 15th of September, you are very welcome um, to join the group there. Um, and just a couple of things to share. So Sunday the 19th of September in the evening will be our next baptism service. Um, so if you are uh, interested in being baptized for the first time um, or would like to know more about that, please contact the office or equally, um, if you're perhaps interested in doing a baptism renewal, you'd be very welcome to do so as well. So please contact the office um, and there is a kind of prep um, session on the 12th of September to attend. But um, please, please get in touch. And finally, um, there is somebody here who I believe is their birthday today. Is that correct? Is that nodded head? David Norton, is it your birthday today? Brilliant. I'm going to be very polite and not ask you how old you are. Um, but uh, it is very welcome to know that it's your birthday today. So many congratulations. Um, and I'm not going to sing, because it would be the most embarrassing and excruciating thing, not just for me, but for you personally, David, if you're here to hear me sing. So, um, uh, But very many happy returns today. Um, so we are going to uh, sing our final song, and then we will finish our service shortly thereafter. If you'd like to stand and join me in our final song.
So, thank you very much for all joining us this morning, and so uh, we will uh, obviously be shortly finishing and say a quick, quick prayer as we finish. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you are the way maker. You are here in our midst, and you're in our presence, both here right now in this building, but as we go into the rest of this week. So I just pray, Lord, that you, you may remain with us, you show us that you're there beside us, standing beside us as we go through the rest of this week. Amen. Thank you all. And uh, for those of you in the building, uh, please uh, exit in an orderly fashion. I feel like an air stewardess saying that. Um, and obviously, please uh, refrain from having too many conversations in here and do so as you get outside the back of the building. Thank you very much. <laughs>